Originally, this was going to be called the Ugly Dinghy Project, but then I sold that dinghy and I bought another dinghy and I traded and swapped that for some cash. And when all was said and done, for about a hundred bucks, I bought this really mega ugly dinghy and I will take you on our journey as we turn it into the dinghy for bootstrap. I think we'll name it Shoestring. Somebody at some point decided they were going to repair this dinghy. And I don't know what they did, but it looks kind of like Bondo. And I have no idea what the original problem was. But whatever it is, the repair was far worse than the problem. So I've started sanding down to get rid of all this crap. And eventually, we're going to find out what was wrong and fix it properly. And I suppose we'll have to end up painting the darn thing. I'm just kind of thinking whoever the previous owner was, they had no idea how to do a fiberglass repair. And on top of that, they didn't even own a sander. There's a little spot where I did actually find a crack in the hull. They repaired it from the inside, but nothing on the outside. And it's pretty bad, but we'll fix it, no problem. Yeah, I've been sanding away on the ugly dinghy now for about an hour and a half, two hours. I've used up some sandpaper got rid of most of the Bondo-like substance, and that's one keel. So I'm going to go sailing, and we'll go back and work on the rest of it later. <laughs> Here's the starboard side keel, and there's the port side keel. And I don't know what it was they were trying to fix, but clearly they had no idea how to do it. Kind of interesting, clearly they did not get the fiberglass prepared very well because it didn't stick. I think the object of what they were doing was this patch right here. I think they did actually punch a hole in it. They repaired it from the inside and then they attempted to ferret out with this Bondo stuff. Well, we got about two layers of patch here on the one where there was a little hole right through the boat. And over on the other side, I put one layer of patch over on the big Bondo. There's a real heavy duty patch on the inside. I just didn't like the Bondo. So we're proceeding along, next thing we'll do is we'll put a strip of glass on each of the keels and we'll see where we are. It just never ends. That's the outboard motor mount. And I pulled off some Bondo and guess what? There's a piece of rotten plywood in there. So we'll go after that next. I cut a little replacement piece for the uh, mount, the motor mount, and because Fiberglass hates sharp corners. I round it off the edges. So now I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of epoxy on all sides of this replacement piece. And hopefully we won't have to deal with a big rotten chunk of wood later on. So we took that waterproof piece of plywood and uh, smeared the back of it with thickened epoxy resin. Used that filler. And then we clamped it to the back and those screws are just to hold it all together until the epoxy sets up, then the screws will come out. <laughs> Seemed to work, great. Unfortunately, I made two cuts that were unnecessary, but this is such a massive fix, it probably doesn't matter anyway, and I can always say, well, it'll come out stronger when we're all done. It's been five months since I last worked on the ugly dinghy, and I'm getting around to painting it, it's not going all that well. I'm trying to use roll and tip, and uh, when I did that part, it was too thin. This part looks a little better. This is really a hard boat to paint because you have so many hard edges, it's not smooth, and you can't do it all in one piece like a roundish boat. Then I got over here on a vertical surface, and it just kind of ran. There's my half-hearted attempt to straighten out the runs. So not going that swell. I think what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and finish the tip and roll and uh, then I'll sand it out, wet sand it with 320. I'll do another coat and if it still sucks, I'll spray it. Well, I got a kind of an orange peel issue, but all in all, not too bad. So if you get the light just right, you can see there's a little bit of an orange peel issue, but still 
uh, I'm a crappy sprayer, but I'm not as bad as I am a tip and roll kind of guy. The solution for the orange peel is I needed to go 10% thinner and I chickened out and only went five. So luckily the boat needs two more coats of paint. I'll wet sand it with 350 and uh, 320 rather, and we will spray another coat with more thinner and then we'll put on a third coat to make it satin. I wet sanded the whole thing and there it is with its second coat of I right think side. I'm done. That's four finished coats and two coats of primer. Came out a lot better than I probably thought it would when I started. It's a little glossier than I would like, but I'm not gonna put on another coat just to tone it down a bit. And if you get really close, you can see a tiny bit of orange peel under the last couple coats. But all in all, pretty good for an image. Now to deal with the inside. I plugged up the holes where they had their swivel seats, so we need to rough that up and do something with it. There's where we patched the outboard mount. That looks pretty good. And there is the big, 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 ugly patch that somebody did. So I think what we'll do is we'll feather out the edges on this patch a little bit, not much, and uh, scuff up the different places where there's resin, and then we'll just wash the whole thing out. And I'll probably either spray or maybe even just roll on some kind of blue paint and call it good. I went ahead and cleaned up the boat's inside. It was pretty nasty. And I didn't really do all the prep of wiping it down with acetone and that sort of thing. I just sprayed it with some gray primer and let it sit. And then I'll give it a couple of coats of blue and we'll call it good. I hate it. I got up at five. I sprayed it with flag blue. It's just horrible. I'm gonna go get a can of some gray Interlux Sprite Side and respray it. Yuck. All right, we're kind of back to zero. This is gray primer. I wasn't sure how the next color would stick to the bright side, so I reprimed it. Three or four coats to go, but I'm happier with this look than that dark blue. This is a Harbor Freight uh, high volume, low pressure gun. I don't know why they call it low pressure. It takes 60 pounds. But in any case, it does a pretty good job. It's the most expensive gun they sell. And of course, I have a big compressor out back. If you're gonna do your own spraying, you'll need a pretty high capacity compressor. I got this one at Home Depot and it didn't cost a fortune and I've plumbed it into the house so it's very handy for me. But you do need a big compressor. This is probably about the minimum. I am much happier with this color. I was having some trouble with the gun while we were spraying this, and so it took more dinking around. Plus, my water separator was full, and I got a couple big drops of water. But being as it's the inside of the ugly dinghy with all that roving and patching, eh, no problem. I picked up some oars over at West Marine, and while I was waiting for the coats of paint to dry, I went ahead and put on the oar locks. This rubber gizmo here is just a son of a gun, but it will go on. A hairdryer helps. I think I'm finally done painting. That's four or five coats on the outside, six on the inside because I screwed up on the color. This last coat knocked down the sheen. I think we're ready to move on with this project. There are some cleats on the seat so we can secure the oars while we're underway. We're going to actually power it with a two horsepower outboard. And I also put in some cleats. There's a series of six of them. That will allow me to have fenders flip over the side. The fenders actually look like this when they're flipped over, so I won't bump into the Catalina. You got the name and the registration numbers on there. Bought those from Boats US. I made up a little jig so I could space all of the cleats the same. The jig was nothing fancy, just a piece of cardboard stapled to a block so I could get all the screw holes the same distance down without measuring over and over again. And in Washington State, you gotta have one of these carbon monoxide warning stickers, even if your boat is only eight feet long and open. Well, gosh, it took 19 months, but I think we're finally done. I took this little trailer behind me and modified it so it would hold up with the catamaran. If they unload the pallets they've got sitting over at West Marine today, we'll finish it tomorrow. That's what it looks like when the fenders are flipped inside. 
That's what it looks like when the fenders are flipped over so we can nudge up against the Catalina. Put in a little mushroom anchor because I take the kids out lake fishing in this boat. When we're using it for a dinghy with the Catalina, we'll tow it with this bridle. When we're not using it, we'll just flip the bridle back. And the bridle will be hooked up to a tow line. On the tow line, we'll use this rubber snubber gizmo, made for docking really, but hopefully that will dampen down some of the motion as we tow the dinghy over the waves. Well, that's it. I think we're done. I can finally clean up this poor shop.